for a coach. He was a man's man, um, a leader from all counts. I said no. I just, I didn't want to coach. He had also some things to prove. You know, things didn't end in Orlando the way that he wanted them to. We had another meeting. They all come to the house. We start talking about players. And so, you know, we kind of connected and, and we got the deal done. Um, and that was the startup. Danny really wanted Doc, and Doc, I think, really wanted Danny and the Celtics. The best compliment I've ever gotten in my life is that Danny Ainge um, called me dirty. <laughs> you know, that's really nice. Doc brought, I thought, a gravitas to the program. I know that this is not going to be a, a job that you just walk into and you walk to the finals. I understand that fully. That was a good day for the Boston Celtics. Armed with three first-round picks, Danny and Doc selected Al Jefferson, Delonte West, and Tony Allen in the June 2004 draft. A few months later, just as Doc settled into his new job, his relationship with the team star player faced some significant challenges. The first year with Paul was difficult. You know, he had gone through a lot of stuff. You know, he had been stabbed. He had two or three coaching changes. He was unhappy. I was very hard on Paul. Earlier. You know, I was playing a certain way, and I felt like this is the way I should play. Doc wanted me to play a certain way, and it's just like we clashed. We didn't really meet in the middle. And I asked him, are you a great shooter? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, the numbers say you're not. I just got used to seeing Paul sulking a lot. The Celtics did make the playoffs in the spring of 2005, but Pierce's frustrations boiled over in the first-round series with Indiana. Loops it out to Pierce, and he's fouled by Tinsley. I got my face torn off on the last play, and that's why I react. I have a fractured jaw. The Pacers eliminated Boston in seven games, but before the start of the next season, Pierce and Doc resolved their differences. I remember coming into his office like, you know what, I'm going to allow you to coach me. You know, whatever you need me to do, I'm willing to do it. It really changed our relationship and I became a better player because of it. The team, however, finished 16 games under 500 and missed the playoffs. But that summer, a fortuitous turn of events yielded long-lasting results. When it came to the 06 draft, Danny loved Rondo. We had Rondo rated very high in that year's draft. I think the first time he seen me play was in Barcelona, Spain. I had uh, 55 and 17, and I think that's when I got on the Celtics radar. Danny was on Rondo before everybody. You know, like, I'm saying long before. And I watched him four or five times, and I went into Danny and said, he sucks. He's not that good. I don't see it. And he said, just keep watching. I'm telling you, just keep watching. And so I kept watching, and I started liking him more and more. We had him in for two workouts that year, and it was pretty impossible not to see the spectacular talent that he had. I felt like I had a little bit of a connection with him in those two workouts as well. Like, I, I just, I liked him. And then Danny says, now listen, he's, he's stubborn. Now, he's a tough kid. You know, in our interview, when we, when we finally came in, I, I thought he was engaging. One thing that stood out to me was he was very, very smart. Um, and still to this day, the smartest guy I've ever coached. Danny was going to draft him number seven. That's where we had our pick. Then a trade came up that day, and Danny traded the seven pick and some other players. But part of it was we took Sebastian Telfair into play point, and so our seventh pick was gone. Rondo was, was slipping down the draft, and we thought he was a great, great value. I said, I've never seen you as excited about a player as I see you excited about Rondo. Go get the pick. So we went and got the number 21 pick from Phoenix. It was a long wait that night, draft night, but obviously things worked out for the better. Four days before Rajon Rondo's rookie year, the Celtics lost the man who invented their mystique. Red Auerbach passed away at the age of 89. At Red's age and with Red's health history, you know, it wasn't a total shock. Um, it was a sad day, but um, it was Red's time, and his legacy still lives with us today, and we, we still talk about Red. The Celtics dedicated the season to Auerbach, but faced obstacles which proved to be impossible to overcome. In 06, 07, I was, that was rock bottom for us. I think we probably at the time had the youngest team in the NBA, and then all of a sudden, Paul got hurt. It was the first time I had an injury where I missed so many games. And it's been bothering me for the past week, and it's just gotten to the point to where 
you know, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. You know, there's nothing we can do about it, and uh, other guys just have to pick it up. And, um, you know, we're just going to try to hold our head above water while he was out somehow. We tried to win all the, the best that we could, but uh, it was just a lot of inexperienced players, and it was hard. We lost 18 straight that year, so I feel like you know, something's got to shake up and change. It was just like in the dream that, that never ended, that you couldn't get out of, and we kept losing. It was just like every dream ended with a loss. Just a heartbreaking loss for this club time. Well, get used to it. Doc was teaching calculus to people that barely know addition. People were telling me to fire Danny and Doc. I said no. There's fire Doc Chance. Uh, there was uh, these two guys that sat behind our bench with two paper bags, one that said fire Doc, fire Danny. I just wanted to make sure that the Boston fans and the Boston media knew that you know, we're, our team is not good. It would have been a total disservice to Doc to, you know, not stick with him through the hard times. Doc is a really good coach. And, uh, you know, I got to do my job and bring some players in here so he has a chance to succeed. Hope sprang eternal in May of 2007. The Celtics had the second best odds in the league to land potential franchise cornerstones Greg Oden or Kevin Durant. In the 07 draft, we had a lot of hope that we were going to get one of these top two guys. Danny had targeted one of them, and uh, it was, in fact, Durant, but that's, and that's the truth. But uh, we didn't know where our pick was going to be, but we had the number two slot in the lottery. So we figured we were going to get one, two, or three, most likely. We had our eyes set pretty high on Kevin Durant internally. That year, I felt like they were going to do it. I felt like they were going to get either one or two. They were well positioned. I wanted to know before everybody else. I love that feeling, right? So I was in the lottery ballroom, and I saw the balls fall, and I immediately knew as soon as we didn't have a certain number, I knew we had gone to five immediately. I had to sit there for 40 minutes, sort of sulking. We were watching this on television as it came down, and when they panned into the room, Wick you know, had, had a look of uh, uh, a very sad look on his face. I looked at those guys. I said, we didn't get it. Pick number five goes to... Boston Celtics. Oh, wow. I was bummed. I mean, I was down at that moment. I was like, oh, man. The great picture, I think, summed it up. There was like a Celtics fan on TV with just hands on the head. You can't even make the argument that, oh, you know, it might be a game changer at five. There wasn't. So here you go. Again, as a Celtics fan, what do we do now? You feel sorry for yourself for about five minutes and then you move on and you, you devise another plan. And once I saw the draft lottery and we ended up with the fifth pick, it was like, you know what, I think I'm, I'm out of here. No one knew what was going to happen that offseason. Paul Pierce was frustrated. Our star player, he was in the paper asking for help. The rumors were loud. You know, I wasn't happy. You know, I was voicing my frustration to uh, Danny Ainge and, and the owners. And I really thought it would happen you know, that summer. I just didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. We didn't love that draft. After Durant, we weren't really in love with it. And so we were prepared to make a deal with the draft pick if we didn't get Kevin Durant.